Well, hey there. Welcome back to Angry Beaver Woodworks. Whether this be the first video you've ever seen of mine or a continuation of all the others, I'm so glad you tuned in today. We are going to go over every little aspect in regards to the world of epoxy pouring. Stay tuned. Let's get to work. Before we get started on today's video, I wanted to take a short second and actually apologize to all of you, the viewers. Two weeks ago, I posted this video right there for the workbench remodel. If you haven't seen that video yet, by all means, go check it out. I think it's a great video, and I'm going to leave a link for it down in the description below. But in that video, I promised all of you that within one week, I was actually going to come back and do all the aspects in regards to pouring your own epoxy. It's probably been about two weeks now, and there's a reason for that and the delay. And we had technical difficulty. And by technical difficulty, I mean my laptop decided not to work. And by my laptop not working, what I mean to say is it kind of took a plunge down to the concrete. And what I mean by it took a plunge down to the concrete, at no fault of mine, is that my wife possibly might have tripped over the cord that I put in front of everyone's way where she face planted into the concrete and I had to buy a new laptop. That sounds really bad. That probably is my fault. Uh, but yeah, that's a technical delay. I hate it. I hate it. So I apologize sincerely for the length of you having to wait for this video. But everything's fine and she's all good and we're ready to rock. No, not the laptop. The laptop broke. I'm talking about the wife. She's fine. It's okay. Let's get to work. Today we're going to be using a three-quarter inch red oak plywood as a substrate for our countertop. And using a DA sander, we're going to go in and work it down to a 150 grit finish. Ensure that you use a shop vac or a dust collector to clean up all of your debris. We're also going to seal up this surface using a Verithane polyurethane water-based sealant and ensure that you sand in between the coats with 220 grit sandpaper. Here you can see that we've made a live rock face textured surface out of auto body filler and we're going to go ahead and begin taping and prepping up for any runoff. I'm going to go back in with a piece of cardboard to protect our edges and using different metallic spray paints I'm going to coat this edge and give it a nice color background for the epoxy to run over. We're going to be using gold, copper, bronze, and even an antique gold to dress up this edge and make it look good. Once our paint is dried, I'm going to go back in by hand and clean up the surface and using isopropyl alcohol, I'm going to wipe away all the debris. Before we get to actually mixing up our colors and pouring our finished out epoxy, we're actually going to talk about the product itself. There's a huge variety of different epoxies that are out on the market and they're made for different things. You're either going to be working on a countertop type of surface, you might be even doing a deep pour wood project like a river table of some sort. For today's project, I'm going to be using super clear tabletop epoxy. It's made by FGCI, which is fiberglass coatings incorporated, and I absolutely love this product. It's a food grade, non-toxic, certified epoxy. It's very UV resistant, so it doesn't turn yellow. It goes on super, super thick, but it's also extremely clear, extremely clear. Now, whatever brand of epoxy you may be using, please ensure that you are actually looking at the instructions and the mixing ratios. This is mixed on a one-to-one -one ratio of a resin and hardener, base, catalyst, whatever you want to call it, but it's a one-to-one -one even mixture of these two. There's plenty of them out there that also have a two-to-one mix or a five-to-one mix. Ensure that you evaluate the product that you're using and make sure you do not deviate from that mix ratio. Let's move on. Now I stated earlier that epoxy companies are a dime a dozen and there's a lot of them out there. And the same also holds true with color pigments and dyes. Color pigments actually come in a powder form. They can be a chalk based, mica powder, glitter additives, things of that nature. And an actual dye itself is more like a, re a colored resin that's gonna mix in evenly distribute itself 
throughout your epoxy mixture. Now, what you're looking at here is a pile of different colors that I strictly get from Black Diamond Pigments. To me, they're the best value for the brand. And again, I'm gonna have a link in the description below. But they, their colors are so great, they mix up very great. And with every one, you get a nice little color card so you can memorize all of your colors. Let's get to it. Before we actually pour our base coat slash flood coat, we're gonna apply two different layers of painter's tape to the outer edge of our countertop and give it a little bit of stability so that it doesn't run off. We're gonna go ahead and mix up our part A and part B mixture equally and ensure that you have three ounces per square foot. Adding in our base color, which is gonna be a black pigment, we're gonna go ahead and mix that together and now it's time to actually move forward and pour down our flood coat. We're gonna use a 1 8 inch trowel and actually disperse this evenly across the countertop. The base coat is gonna allow all of our dirty pour epoxy to flow evenly across the countertop itself. After spreading out our base coat, we're going to go ahead and mix up another batch of Part A and Part B and disperse this equally into our different pigment colored cups. Ensure that you thoroughly stir this and mix all of your color pigment very well into the actual epoxy resin. Now you can easily do just a single color pour if you'd like for your countertop, but going back into designs and textures, we're going to create this dirty pour epoxy right here. And real quickly, I'm going to show you how. A dirty pour epoxy has no actual procedure. You're going to use different amounts of different pigment dyes and add in a lot of different things like your metallic spray paints, base colors, and all of your veins and technique colors. It's all going to mix together on its own. Ensure that you do not stir this actual bucket. Our black base coat has gone ahead and self-leveled and we're going to move in and pour our actual dirty pour mixture across the top in a certain pattern. This is going to make nice little veins and runoff areas of different colors and I think you're going to like the look. Now coming back with a hair dryer, we're going to use this procedure here and just start to move all the different designs around however you see fit. It's going to give it really wild effects and I think you're going to like the design of it as well. The hot air coming from the actual blow dryer or from a heat gun itself will also ensure that you pop all the bubbles. Once your countertop has self-leveled, come back in one last time with either your heat gun or in this case a hair dryer and push your final texture around and really work on that design. This will also ensure that you've gotten rid of all of your surface bubbles. Now this is our finished look for the actual color layer itself. Feel free to leave a comment down below and tell me what you think of this pattern. Pay close attention to your actual finish and as it's starting to cure, you'll see that it's going to gum up and we're going to use a shim to wipe away all the excess. You can choose to use different finishes on your countertop, but here we're going to go back in and hand sand after 24 hours and we're going to get rid of any minor imperfections we find. I'm going to flow across the actual grain pattern of the poured texture itself and just lightly make a mechanical bond using 220 grit paper. 
We're gonna use alcohol again to remove all the dust and debris and clean out your bucket. And the time has finally come for our nice, clear flood coat. We're gonna pour this evenly across the countertop as you see here, and going back in with a roller, we're gonna go ahead and push that around and start to level it out in equal amounts all the way across the countertop. Ensure that you are evenly spreading your clear coat across the entire surface and come back in with a chop method and actually start to break up all that surface tension. You can move back into the world of a heat gun or in this case a torch and I'm going to very lightly go over the top surface and ensure that all the surface bubbles have actually been popped. And once your clear coat has started to harden up as well, take a look at your outer edge and again, come back in with shims and ensure that you get all this runoff drips off of your final finish. And with all that, we've reached the end of yet another Angry Beaver Woodworks video. I'm so glad that you stopped by today, and I truly hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel if you feel like it, and click that notification bell. Also, like, share, tell all your friends. We're still working our goal for 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, and I'm already taking in any suggestions and ideas you have on that shop build. It's gonna be a free giveaway to one of our lucky viewers. So stay tuned and until next time, y'all keep on creating.